Welcome to Design 30. This is a podcast where I provide design strategies and tools to improve creativity, innovation, and overall design confidence. You may have noticed once again that there is no intro music. And this, as I explained on the last podcast, is uh, me trying to focus on providing valuable content and trying to cut out all of the frivolous and unnecessary things. Again, because I want to be able to focus on the important parts of the podcast and there's only so much time in the day. So I had to cut some things out, giving it a shot. If you don't like it, please let me know. Shoot me a comment on Instagram or send me an email. Uh, you can reach me at learndesign30 at gmail.com. Also, you c- can and should, in my opinion, follow Design30 on Instagram, Twitter, Substack, or YouTube. And if you want to support the podcast, as always, uh, you can support me via Substack. And not as always, you can no longer support me on Patreon. That is, again, one of the things that I'm cutting out for the time being, trying to focus on uh, the parts of the podcast that actually provide value. So today is, well, I'm recording this the day before Christmas, Christmas Eve, and you will be hearing this the day after Christmas. So I hope you had a great Christmas and you're gearing up for an awesome new year. Uh, This episode is on uh, the double diamond design model. So that is what we will be discussing. And just a quick high level overview of the episode, I'll talk about what it is, uh, why it's useful, and then also how to improve the effectiveness of the model and improve your creative abilities at the same time. To start, what is the double design, excuse me, the double diamond design model? Well, it was first introduced by the British Design Council in 2005, so it's actually relatively new, I would say. And it's fairly simple. At its core, it's a method of approaching design where you start off with diverging and then you converge and then you go through another cycle of diverging and then converging. And you can think about this as there's two different types of uh, thinking that perhaps I'm pretty sure I've talked about, perhaps you've heard about, is divergence and convergence. So divergent thinking is where you're trying to come up with as many ideas or thoughts or solutions to a problem as possible. For example, someone could hand you a brick and be like, what can you do with this? And you just want to come up with every single idea you could come up with. Like, oh, well, I could use it as an anchor or I could use it as a door prop or I could use it as a a bookend, something like that. And then convergent thinking is when you want to come to a very specific answer. And so the question could be something that leads you towards uh, something specific. For example, uh, what is made of trees and has words on it and can be enjoyable? That would be a book. (laughs) There's a very specific answer. You could probably come up with some crazy Uh, idea of what else that could describe but in convergent thinking you want to be able to come up with a very specific answer that is the best based on the criteria uh, that you're given and so the double diamond uh, design model you can think of as two diamonds as you probably guessed and so in the first diamond as the two lines start at a point on the left and then start to diverge from each other. This is where you diverge. And then as the two lines come together, this is where you converge. And so there's two diamonds because the one on the left is the first part of the design process. This is where you're trying to find the right problem to solve. So first you are diverging, and this is also called the discovery phase or something uh, similar to that. You're trying to come up with all of the possible causes of the problem. You really want to understand it. You understand what's causing it, uh, where its potential uh, causes are coming from, just really trying to understand the scope of the problem. 
And then as the lines come back together in the convergence part of finding the right problem, you're starting to throw out some of your bad ideas. You're trying to define and hone in on one singular problem statement. So you're converging and defining this problem statement. And then on the right side, uh, the second diamond, you again go through a divergence step. So now you have the right problem defined and you need to develop a solution. So in this step, you start with developing and you're uh, diverging out once again to come up with as many solutions to this problem that you have come up with. So you wanna come up with crazy solutions, outlandish ideas, and then also some realistic ideas and just you don't want to uh, you don't want to limit this process too much. You want to come up with as many good, sometimes bad, creative ideas as you're diverging out and just coming up with this entire solution space. And then again, you begin your convergence. And here you're converging on a solution that's actually going to solve the problem. And this is a solution that you eventually want to deliver as a product to the customer. So that's why it's called the double diamond. You have this initial diamond where you diverge, come up with a bunch of ideas of what the problem is, and you converge on this one singular problem statement. And then the second diamond, you diverge once again, coming up with as many ideas on how to solve this problem as you can. And then you converge on a specific solution that you can deliver to the customer. And so there's some good uh, content on this from the book, The Design of Everyday Things by Don Norman. And I know I've read from this book before and I will continue reading from it because it's great. And it's got so many good ideas. And he's really, his writing is really clear. It's really understandable and really approachable. So it's, again, highly recommend this book. Absolutely love it. So here talking about the double diamond design model, he says, designers often start by questioning the problem given to them. They expand the scope of the problem, diverging to examine all the fundamental issues that underlie it. Then they converge upon, upon a single problem statement. During the solution phase of their studies, they first expand the space of possible solutions, the divergence phase. Finally, they converge on a proposed solution. So this is his description of the double diamond process that I had also just described to you. And then he goes on to say, the double diverge converge process is quite effective at freeing designers from the unnecessary restrictions to the problem in solution spaces. So again, this process allows for wild ideas. It allows for a, a broad scope. Uh, it helps ensure that you aren't too narrow minded which is really important uh, in the design process. It's very easy to go off maybe just your history or your experience and you have an idea and you're like, this is definitely the problem. I'm 100% certain. You just tunnel vision on that. Uh, and this is trying to avoid that. You want to broaden out. You want to leave space for wild ideas or ideas that might seem wild at first, but maybe the more you look into it, you realize this is actually a really good idea. Um, or it's a really good description of what the problem is. But the other thing that the double diamond process does for you is it forces you to eventually define the problem. And then once you define the problem, again, you get a widen out looking at different solutions, but then at the end, it forces you to deliver an actual solution. So there are very concrete outcomes to this. Uh, and it's it's extremely important, especially from the perspective of a product manager, to put dates on these uh, deliverables. You want to have dates on when the problem will be defined, and you want to have a date on when this will be, or when you will deliver an actual solution. And it, it, this is something that Don Norman talks about this. It can be pretty nerve wracking for a product manager when your design team just, you know, seems really unfocused, uh, they're exploring all sorts of wild ideas. You're thinking, oh, this seems like a waste of time. Why are they doing that? Why are they traveling there? And why aren't they just defining the problem and coming up with a solution right away? 
So it takes a little bit of trust in your team and a, some faith in the process uh, that this is actually going to be beneficial in the long term. So you need to let the process work. You have to give your design team the time, uh, the time it takes to go through this divergence process. And that's where it really takes commitment to the processes, the divergence phase, because that's where it's going to feel like things are getting out of hand, spending too much money, too much time. These ideas aren't any good. So you really have to commit to the process. You need to drive it towards completion dates, like I said. And additionally, a budget, of course, is also really important. So you need to make sure your team is staying on schedule and on budget. And this is something that Don Norman also uh, addresses in the same section. So I'm going to read this to you as well. He says, how does the product manager keep the entire team on schedule despite the apparent random and divergent methods of designers? Encourage their free exploration, but hold them to the schedule and budget. There is nothing like a firm deadline to get creative minds to reach convergence. And that last line I really love because I think it's also quite true. There's nothing like a firm deadline to get creative minds to reach convergence. Uh, if you're a product manager, hopefully you have a bunch of people who are very creative and love just coming up with ideas and problem solving and <clears throat> and doing brainstorms and all those sorts of things. Uh, but you need to make sure you are driving them to a budget and to a schedule. So moving on now to how you actually improve your ability to be creative uh, and how to use this and how to be creative within this double diamond model and how to improve your ability to use this double diamond model. So you can actually practice this divergence and convergence process. And actually just this week, or when you're listening to this last week, uh, Andrew Huberman on his Huberman Lab podcast discussed uh, essentially exactly this. The name of the episode is The Science of Creativity and How to Enhance Creative Innovation. And again, incredible episode. I can't recommend the Huberman Lab podcast enough. Uh, it's <clears throat> everything from uh, self-improvement, how to improve your sleep, how to improve your workouts, how to improve your creativity. He does such a good job of bringing in real scientific data and information and papers and uh, taking those, dissecting them, and uh, actually creating some pretty simple and easy to follow processes or rules of thumb and yeah so again i can't recommend that that podcast enough uh, he does great work uh, so here getting back to the topic he discusses in this episode that there are two meditation tools that you can use to improve your ability for divergent thinking and your ability for convergent thinking the first one is called open monitoring meditation so this is your divergent thinking practice. Essentially, you want to sit still or lie down, close your eyes, and just kind of observe your thoughts and as things come to mind. And in this one, you want to let things come to mind and just kind of think through it, all these different thoughts and ideas. And you're really just trying to let them come to mind, visualize them, see them and just wait for what comes next. So you're not controlling it so much. You're not trying to focus on any one thing. It's really just trying to broaden out your thoughts and let whatever happens happen. Um, and then the other one is called focused attention meditation. And this is uh, how you practice convergent thinking. So you want to focus. You want to focus on your breath. Uh, that's a classic way of doing it. Uh, you can also focus on the location just behind your forehead. This is also a very common spot. It's kind of where you actually feel the breath, at least for me, going through my nose. And that's where I try to focus. And it's funny how this works. I, you, <laughs> I've noticed that when I'm trying to do open monitoring meditation, it's actually hard to get my brain to come up with all these crazy thoughts and random things popping in. My brain tends to start to calm down. And then when I do focused attention meditation, my brain has all of these random thoughts popping in and I'm kind of fighting them back or not 
fighting them back but letting them pass. Uh, again, you're supposed to stay calm. I think they call it non-judgmental observation of your thoughts. So in focused meditation, yes, these thoughts are going to pop in. You kind of want to let them come and go and then return to focusing on your breath or that spot just behind your forehead. Um, so I've been doing this, uh, at least for this week, since listening to the episode, uh, every morning I set up just 10 minutes and for the first five minutes, I practice open monitoring meditation. And then the next five minutes, I have been practicing focused attention. And Huberman discusses that there's evidence for this improving your creativity, your ability to access these divergent and convergent mindsets uh, with just doing it once a week. So it's really, you know, it doesn't take that much commitment. Obviously, doing more is better. I think doing it every morning is probably the best way to go. And going for longer times than what I mentioned, 10 minutes, is also uh, beneficial. But even just doing it for a few minutes a day sounds like there's good evidence for this improving your ability for convergent and divergent thinking and your ability to be creative. All right, let's review this episode. What did we discuss? First of all, we discussed the double diamond design model. It's a series of diverging and converging, divergent thinking, convergent thinking. You need to first find, or you need to find the right problem to solve. So you diverge and discover your entire problem set, and then you converge and you define a problem statement. And the next you move into finding the right solution to the problem. So here you diverge and develop uh, all the different solutions that you can think of to this problem that you've defined. And then you converge and you deliver an actual solution to the problem. And then you can improve your ability to do this by practicing number one, open monitoring meditation for your convergent or excuse me, your divergent thinking, and then focused attention meditation for your convergent thinking. As you may have guessed, the design 30 discipline for this week is practicing this. So each morning, I would say wake up and immediately or as soon as you can uh, do five minutes of open monitoring meditation and then five minutes of focused attention meditation. And you can also, you don't have to do it in the morning. You can do it throughout the day. You can do it before uh, maybe you're doing a brainstorm or some sort of ideation session. You can do it before that as well. But that's the design 30 discipline for the week. So 10 minutes total five minutes open monitoring, and five minutes of focused attention. And that's it for this week. Uh, again, I hope you had a great Christmas. Hopefully you ate lots of good food and lots of cookies. Uh, my wife just made gingerbread cookies, so I am excited to eat way too many of those. Uh, as always, you can find Design30 on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Substack. And with that, wishing you all a a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. And as always, remember, design more, despair less. Thanks for listening.